On this channel, I show you exactly what it's like to live in Toronto, from places to eat, to hidden gems, to places that you eventually buy and call home. I'm Katrina Obrant, and today I'll be your tour guide as we highlight the pros and cons of living in Toronto. Toronto is one of the most desirable places to live in Canada, from the food, to the job opportunities, to the historic sites and outdoor activities. You're bound to find something in this city that's just right for you. So what are some of the pros and cons about living in this city? Watch this video to find out. People message me all the time looking to relocate to Toronto, and these conversations are exciting. One, because I'm a Toronto-born local and I've lived all over the city. And two, when people tell me places that they want to live, like the type of neighborhood or the style of amenities, or even close proximity to schools, grocery stores, and things of that nature, I know exactly what neighborhood is suitable to their needs within five to 10 minutes of having those conversations. I am a Toronto-born local and I'm also a licensed real estate agent. So if you are looking to relocate to Toronto, send me a message and I will be happy to start a conversation with you. Toronto, it's not actually Canada's capital, it's Ottawa. However, it is Canada's largest city and there's a reason it's home to some 6 million people. With incredible food, culture, diversity and sights to see, the capital of Ontario is a lively place to explore and reside. But living in Toronto also comes with some challenges. Here are my eight pros and cons of living in Toronto. The first pro is food. Toronto is known for having some of the best international cuisine in all of Canada. From sushi to steakhouse to vegetarian, we literally have it all. The interesting thing about Toronto is that we don't have any Michelin star restaurants. However, we do have several Michelin star chefs serving up unique dishes, even for the most discerning palates. If you love meatballs, you definitely want to head over to Seven Numbers on Eglinton. The cuisine is full of flavor, filling, and all of their recipes have been passed down from generation to generation, dating back all the way to their ancestry in Italy. Plus, if you look them up on Yelp, they actually have the number one rating for meatballs all across the city. You don't want to miss out on this one. If you love steak, I highly recommend you check out Jacob's. This place is beautiful, the service is wonderful, and the steak is out of this world. They have this crust around the steak that I've never seen in any other steakhouse. They serve everything a la carte. The steak comes with three different types of salt to dip your steak in, and they also make an amazing tableside Caesar salad directly from scratch. Now, if you are a vegan or a vegetarian, we have a lot of different restaurants to choose from. We have Fresh on Spadina, which is one of my favorites. They are known for their power bowls and some of their electrolyte coconut lemonade. Trust me, it's delicious. There's also a restaurant called King's Cafe in Kensington Market. You'll be hard pressed to find any other restaurant in the city that serves vegan chicken wings like theirs. There's not much you can't grub on in Toronto and you'll quickly find you'll have a hard time trying them all. Con, Toronto is an expensive city to live in. Toronto is a pay to play city and almost nothing is free. We have the highest rental median in Canada and that's just one of the cost of living aspects that are on the steeper end in this city. As a single Toronto resident, utilities can cost up to $155 per month depending on your lifestyle. Transportation, food, and drinks are also more expensive than some of their other Canadian cities. For example, an imported craft beer can run you almost $10 a meal for one at a casual restaurant will run you around $18. A monthly transportation pass will be about $145 and childcare costs will be around $1,800. Now, these are just averages, so keep this in mind. I don't wanna mislead anybody here and I'll give you an example. I live uptown and my childcare expenses cost me around $1,700, whereas I have friends who live directly downtown and their childcare costs were about $2,500 a month. Pro, Toronto has a lot of job opportunities. There are so many job opportunities here in Toronto. Our city is the financial capital of Canada, and it's the International Capital Centre for Business and Finance. The city's financial district, particularly on Bay Street, has a high concentration of brokerages and banks. The city is home to the seventh largest stock exchange in the world, the Toronto Stock Exchange. Canada's big five banks have national offices in Toronto, and we are also a vital center for information technology, telecommunications, publishing, media, and film production. 
With this thriving business center, locals might be paying a pretty penny to live here, but they certainly have job opportunities to pay for some of their expenses. According to the city's annual employment survey, Toronto added more than 46,000 jobs in 2019, including 10,000 in the tech sector. That's 3.1% growth year over year. Con, extremely hot summers and very cold winters. Expect to experience hot, humid summers, averaging 35 degrees daily and extremely cold winters that feel like they drag on for months. Although with Toronto's location right next to Lake Ontario, we do get some of that lake effect, which makes the summers feel a little bit colder on some days and makes the winters feel a little bit warmer. Now on the days that it is extremely hot and you wanna cool off, Toronto has a lot of beaches. Now during the winter, on some of our milder days, there are some opportunities for you to hit the slopes less than two hours away. Pro, Toronto's diverse neighborhoods. Toronto has a wide range of appealing neighborhoods. We actually have 216 different neighborhoods all across the greater Toronto area. All with something unique of its own, from the architecture and style to character, which means there's bound to be at least one home that's just right. Check out the Young Eglinton neighborhood where there's always a new restaurant or coffee shop to try. If you're looking for a place that's close to work, this is definitely the intersection to try it out. It's a very short commute to downtown. It's just one straight subway ride, less than 25 minutes, and you're in the heart of it all. Kensington Market is as cultural as it gets. As young families and residents alike come here to check out its eclectic mix of shops and restaurants. Fun fact, in the early 1900s, Kensington Market was actually known as the Jewish Market. But not only did it serve Jewish immigrants, it also served Ukrainians, African Americans, Italians, and Hungarians. Many families opened up restaurants, clothing stores, fish markets, most of which can still be found there to this day. The distillery district in Toronto is a national historic site and a pedestrian-only walking area. There's some unique history that lives below the streets of this neighborhood. In the early 1900s, during the era of Prohibition, Al Capone, one of New York's most notorious gangsters, partnered up with the Gooderham family that owned the distillery district and would make whiskey in their underground vats, which you can still find to this day. He would then transport these illegal bottles of whiskey on the train from the distillery district all the way to New York City. Today, the distillery district celebrates the culture of Toronto by participating in art shows, lots of eclectic shops, a night market, and during the winter time, they have this beautiful winter market with lots of lights, festive food, drinks, decor, and a light show. Bloor Yorkville is Toronto's most elegant shopping and dining neighborhoods. The neighborhood features many small alleyways, courtyards, and charming Victorian style homes plus first-class designer boutiques, antique shops, and galleries. During TIFF in September, many A-list celebrities can be seen dining and taking in some of the artistic sites in Toronto. Fun fact, all new buildings in Toronto must dedicate 4% of the surface area to street art, and you'll see this in many of our four and five-star hotels. If you head on over to the Shangri-La, one of the five-star hotels, you'll see this beautiful scale elephant with all these birds flocking around it. This is called Rising and was created by a contemporary artist, Zhang Huan. If you head on over to the St. Regis Hotel, you'll see a 500,000 mosaic tile themed on multiculturalism, created by Stephen Andrews. You'll also notice many condo buildings that have an LED light strip around the top roof patio or at the very top of the building. Most of the time, the lights are all coordinated. So if you're ever standing on one of the higher floors of a condo building, you'll be able to see right across the city, many of the colors are very similar. Cons, construction and traffic. Torontonians have a saying, there's only two seasons in Toronto, winter and construction. In any big city, you're going to have a lot of traffic and congestion, and Toronto is no exception. Usually, if I want to get anywhere, you really have to plan to drive between the hours of 12 a.m. and 5 a.m. I know, it sounds kind of ridiculous, but that's just the way it is. And if there's any weather restrictions, you can expect to add on 30 minutes to 3 hours onto your trip 
depending on where you're going. Now, the cool thing about Toronto is that it was designed like a grid. So if you ever get stuck at a major intersection or a major artery, you can always just take the next street over and kind of snake through the city to get to your destination. Pro day trips. There are so many cool day trips that are within a one to two hour drive from Toronto. Firstly, let's talk about Niagara Falls. It's only a th an hour and 30 minute drive from Toronto and you get to see beautiful Canadian and US falls, which they light up at night. They have a really nice strip where you can check out some of the more touristy sites, restaurants, and then get back in your car and head home. If you love hiking and the great outdoors, definitely head over to Hamilton. They have many walking trails. You do have to book in advance, so make sure that you just log on to their Hamilton Parks and Recreation website. I think the fee is around $7.50 for a day pass, and you get to choose between seven different walking trails in some of their parks. Some of them have more. They have beautiful mountains, they have really nice waterfalls, and they have less challenging hikes for the family. So feel free to check that out as well. If you're looking for a little more tropical experience, drive an hour and 30 minutes north and you will be transported onto a tropical beach with white sand and clear blue waters, Sobble Beach. Here, you'll see a lot of Torontonians flocking there during the summertime because it's such a short trip away from the city. There are cottages you can rent right on the beach some that are a little bit further away, and even camping sites that are within 15 minutes of the strip. In the wintertime, you can head an hour and 30 minutes north to Blue Mountain. They do have smaller skiing hills, so you know if you are a bit of enthusiast, then I definitely recommend you head over to Mont Tremblant. That's a little bit further. I wouldn't consider it a day trip, but it's still within a close proximity to Toronto, and you do not need to take a flight to get there. Pro sports. Ask any sports enthusiast about which mega cities have incredible sports activities and Toronto is definitely on that list. Whether it's baseball, basketball, hockey, soccer, lacrosse, golf, you name it, we have it all. You can find yourself immersed in activities all over Toronto. Within the GTA, we have over a dozen golf courses, over 150 recreation centers, and 1500 parks that you can skate, jog, cycle, or take a leisurely walk in. Toronto, like many other cities, has its challenges, but also some major perks. Considering living in Toronto, put a message in the box below. I respond to all of my messages.